YouTube wants a word with creators, especially small creators. Too many videos are running free from ads. YouTube is tired of eating the expense of running a platform without profiting from it, so they're going to place ads on selected, unmonetized videos. That seems to be a reverse of their policies regarding AdSense and channels outside of the Partners Program, except that the channels will still not be in the Partners Program and therefore ineligible for a share of the ad revenues generated. So, no partners needed, it seems. Let's talk about that, shall we? Partners program is a pretty good deal. YouTube provides a platform to upload videos for free, and if a channel has sufficient subscribers, views, and watch time, YouTube will sell ad space on the channel and cut the content creator in on a share of the revenues. That's a powerful incentive to build a channel, and thus a powerful incentive to upgrade equipment, software, and expertise in order to create the production values which attract people. The costs of those upgrades are investments made by the creator, not YouTube so YouTube can increase the quality of the content they offer without capital investment on their part. YouTube has made adjustments on how the Partners Program works in the past. Originally, the 2007 YPP rules were very exclusive. In 2012, YPP was opened up to everyone in order to make more ad space available to sell. This followed the first YouTube Armageddon, when numerous idle channels were deleted. Things went well until 2017, at which point YouTube imposed a 10,000 view requirement in order to be eligible for YPP. In 2018, this was switched to 4,000 hours of watched content in the last year and 1,000 subscribers. Only larger channels which are active can join YPP and monetize their channels. Well, that lasted for less than three years. YouTube just announced that they will now run ads on selected videos from channels outside of the YPP. Being selected for ads will not, however, make the channel creator eligible for YouTube Partners Program and the share of ad revenues which goes with it. These ads will start by running on larger channels which choose not to monetize their content on purpose. Hmm. Well, this is a problem for YouTube and its creators. YouTube grants free access to creators so long as they abide by the community guidelines. They bear the costs of hosting the site and providing all the technical support to provide that free access, too. Accordingly, YouTube's position is that they have the right to monetize all content on their website because it's their business and they have a right to earn a profit. On the other hand, creators bear all of the production expenses for making that content. If ads are running on that content, then they should have the right to a share of those revenues because, like with YouTube, their channels are their businesses. They should also have the right to keep their channel free from ads if they choose to do so. The law on this matter isn't exactly well established, though. Content creators are effectively independent contractors if they are in the YPP, and as such can demand that YouTube honor the contract that monetizes their channel. Unmonetized channels, however, have no contract other than the terms of use, which, since they are effectively customers and not contractors, can be unilaterally changed by YouTube. There's no help there for content creators unhappy with these changes other than to take their content to another platform. You see, just because content is uploaded to YouTube doesn't mean that the content belongs to YouTube. Uploading it there grants YouTube a limited license to that content. That license is a, quote, worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free, transferable license with right to sub-license to use, reproduce, distribute, prepare derivative works of, display, and perform that content in connection with the provision of the service and otherwise in connection with the provision of the service and YouTube's business including without limitation for promoting and redistributing part or all of the service and derivative works thereof in any media formats and through any media channels, unquote. In other words, YouTube can keep using your content in perpetuity without paying royalties. They can broadcast creator content, including clips of that content in their official videos like YouTube Rewind, and monetize it by running advertising on it. So far, there's no recourse in contract law to force YouTube to pay for the ads it places on creator content. Creators agreed to the terms of service in order to access the website. YouTube knows this because they wrote the terms of service, and now they are asserting their right to earn money on this content. YouTubers who chose to keep their content ad-free by staying out of YPP no longer have the option to keep ads off of their videos. And as written, 
YouTube doesn't have to share that advertising revenue with creators who aren't in YPP, as those creators have no contract other than the terms of use and its royalty-free conditions. It comes down to whether the content creators are entitled to a share of money earned on their content. The chance that creators can successfully argue against ad placement in court is negligible, as the terms are a legally binding contract which plainly grants licensed use of the content on the website to YouTube. Likewise, any court challenge to a share of revenues would have to overcome the royalty-free clause in the terms, and would likely have to be a class action lawsuit to stand even a chance of being heard in court. What's more, you can bet that YouTube will either withdraw ads from non-YPP creators, withdraw access to the website to non-YPP creators, or both. It's free access, folks. YouTube doesn't have to allow content on the platform, as it isn't a public utility. There's talk of unionizing creators and then going on strike. That might work if big monetized creators join in, but we have to keep in mind that many of the biggest channels on the site aren't independent creators anymore. They're channels for media companies who already have the content and simply post it on YouTube in order to keep it available for perpetual rebroadcasting and advertising revenues without setting up their own in-house service. If most independent creators boycott the platform, YouTube statistics won't take a significant hit, at least from their point of view, and neither will their advertising revenues. If the biggest independent creators joined in, then YouTube might take notice, but unless those creators are prepared to take a huge hit to their personal revenues, YouTube can just wait them out. So what about users? Couldn't they boycott the platform until creators are compensated for ads? Well, yes. But YouTube can survive such a boycott a lot longer than most creators simply because they have a bigger war chest on which to draw. Advertisers will be more effective if they join the boycott, but they would risk losing their advertising on every Google platform to do it. And Google effectively controls advertising on the internet thanks to Google Ads and AdSense. Interestingly, the dominance of AdSense is also why other rival video sharing platforms can't compete with YouTube. Google isn't going to let those platforms use AdSense or Google Ads, and between the two advertising networks, they control 81.87% of all online advertising. The next biggest internet advertising network is Bing Ads, which controls 3.99% of internet ads. That's not likely to change either, as Google and YouTube are the top two sites in the world, according to Alexa. Google has created what's known in the legal world as a natural monopoly on internet advertising. They don't prevent people from using other advertising services, they simply outcompete them. Natural monopolies are difficult to defeat without government intervention, too, and the government has a vested interest in letting such monopolies continue so long as they are in the best interest of the nation and its people. In order for Congress to pass a law forcing Google to divest itself either of its platforms like YouTube or of its advertising concerns like AdSense, they'd have to be convinced that allowing Google to continue to dominate internet business is not in the best interests of internet users. So far, that hasn't happened. The only serious questions before Congress right now are questions about website curation, and that isn't likely to force YouTube to change anything about their monetization policies. It's up to creators to decide what they will accept. Either a creator will stick with YouTube, the second biggest website in the world, and by far the biggest video sharing website, in order to post their content, or they won't. What I'm most concerned that this will do is to throttle small channel creators and achieve what YouTube has wanted for some time now, a content sharing website that's used by all of the major media companies without a bunch of small channel creators to get in the way of advertising. This move by YouTube just might finally pull it off.